All right, hello everyone on YouTube. My name is Kevin Markham. Today I thought I would show you my uh, black powder kit from my uh, Remington. This is a Remington New Model Army Revolver reproduction made by Pieta. Had a brass front sight put on there by a gunsmith. I browned it with Casey Birchwood's Plum Brown. Put these uh, faux ivory grips on there. And uh, I took off the uh, the markings to make it more authentic looking. There's a couple other things in it too, but this is the this is the kit that I have together for it. And so starting over here, in this uh, oiler, I think this is a, a Ted Cash uh, Ted Cash uh, product, and uh, this is an oiler, and it's got some. What's called moose milk in there, which is ballastol and water. Um, this is a funnel for my flask, uh, just to you know help pour powder in it. And this one, this is like a, um, it's not exactly like 100% period correct, but it's a bottle. So this is a Mosin Nagant uh, oiler. You might notice a uh, Russian surplus. It's got canola oil in it right now. And uh, people used to use canola oil for lubricant, and it's kind of, you know, obviously been taken over as a as a use for cooking. But just, I like to pour uh, a generous amount down the barrel just to uh, just to get the gun wet so I'm not shooting it dry, just to kind of lubricate it some bit. And then in these, uh, well, again, Ted Cash, uh, these cap boxes, you can't necessarily see it in this lighting too much, but I love brass. The brass has really tarnished really well and it's it looks very orange when compared to when I first got it. And in here I just have Remington number 10 caps. And then I have, you know, two of those uh just a style a st pretty standard Allen wrench. I mean not Allen wrench, what am I thinking? Nipple wrench right here. And then over here I have this powder flask, and uh, powder, powder flask. Um powder measure. This is uh I think it goes up to like 100 yeah, 100 grains, and uh, then I have another oiler, Ted Cash, and this just has Balasol in it. Uh, another powder measure here, and uh, this is made by Petersoli. Quick little thought about this one from Petersoli. The uh, funnel, uh, the screw was very loose, it kept coming off, so I had to put some Loctite on there to get it stay. This one over here, I prefer much better. It's like my main one that I use, because that's just pretty awesome. I picked this up at a gun. Um, gunsmith here in Arizona had this and uh, you know he just had a couple things laying around he's like yeah that's for sale uh, spare um, the spare uh, spout there we go spare spout and then a, a spare uh, powder measure this is uh, 30 grains Ted Cash again over here I have uh, I believe this was a it's described as a snuff box uh, from Ted Cash and in here I just have some uh, lubricants from my uh, I put this over the cylinder mouths of my uh, the chamber mouths of my cylinder and what this is is it's mainly uh, paraffin wax and Crisco's there's also some beeswax in there mink oil uh, and some other stuff I had laying around some Thompson's boar butter some other lubricants and even there's some there's even some Hubbard shoe grease in there uh, and uh, lamb tallow and some other kind of tallow that's in the shoe grease. I don't remember exactly. But, um, so yeah, I have a lot of that. And I just have it in, in these little things. I just kind of put them in these little, uh, cat, these little uh, tins. Here I have my, uh, basically my cleaning kit. I just have this in there basically to, to pad it so it doesn't like rattle around and just be annoying. But uh, here I just have this 45 caliber uh cleaning kit. I do not really like this plastic on there as, as you can as you can tell I've gotten very period correct with all of this. You know I don't I got you know these little cap boxes made out of brass instead of just having them in the Remington number 10 thing so I'll be looking at probably getting another uh, cleaning kit for this or maybe I'll just try to take this off there and maybe replace it with like a wooden uh, handle. I got some cleaning patches in there and then over here, I just have this uh, this little pocket knife that I use to uh, apply the uh, the lubricant to the uh, chamber mouths. I have a wad here for uh, cutting uh, 0.454 diameter uh, felt wads. I feel like it's not very sharp. 
because I really have to hit it with a heavy hammer a lot in order to get this thing to cut wads. And I was trying to cut it and the wad, and the felt I was using was way too thin. So if it couldn't cut through, you know, like one inch thick felt, it's definitely not going to cut through like two or three inch felt. So that's pretty, I'm not sure, you know, what I'm going to do with that. It's not really working out well. If I have a... Uh, I have this uh, lubricant, so I don't really necessarily need felt wads that are pre-lubricated. I don't really need spacers. Um, and I know that black powder likes it. It's good to compress it, uh, so wadding helps with that. But I can also use something else like uh, cornmeal or something like that. Is what I could probably use instead. Coming over here, I have this uh, flask, and this is actually, a, I believe it's a Colt style powder flask. Um, on point to make about these powder flasks is they, they look really cheap online. In pictures, they look really uh, cheap to me, uh, but in person, you know, this is made out of metal. It's, uh, I think it's bronze or something like that. And this one is nice and beat up and worn and uh, and tarnished. Uh, again, I bought this used for about eight bucks. Uh, you can find this for sale in most places for like fifty bucks. So I don't, you know, it's I think it's a Colt style, and I have a Remington. Uh, but for the price of eight bucks compared to fifty, I'm not I'm not about to go out and buy a fifty dollar um, um, powder flat powder flask just to have one that's 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 Remington or whatever. I like it. It's old and aged. I have this here, which is a uh, he calls it a lead ladle, and uh, you just you know you dip this into uh, hot lead, pour it out through this little uh, spout here. It's got a, a hole in there so that when you fold it out, you can put a twig in there so you don't you know hurt your hand by the fire. Of course, I have this uh, cast iron pot, and I can put this over a campfire and melt lead. I have a bag full of 0 .454 diameter lead round balls. And then I also have this Lee double cavity bullet mold. This is round ball, 0 0.454 diameter. And, uh, you know, I didn't get, uh, they have, uh, mallets to smack this open, but I'm not really going to spend $10 on a mallet, even though it's only $10. Uh, I feel like a stick, uh, a piece of wood is just more authentic because authenticity is pretty important to me here. Not that I'm a just like a reenactor or anything, but I also have just this leather cord here. I mean, I doubt that this uh, this thing here is ever gonna, you know, uh, fail. That the latch is gonna ever fail. Uh, it's not like a it's not like a walker where that latch uh, fails all the time. But if it ever if anything ever happens, you know, it's good to just have this. I can tie the the lever to the gun. Uh, if I wanted to ever shorten it, and I didn't want to go through the trouble of putting this latch back on there, I could just shorten it and then uh, shorten it and then tie it with this leather th uh, cord. But I probably won't do that. And then over here, I have a snail uh, capper. Again, another Ted, Ted Cash product. It's got some caps loaded up in there. You just click this down, shake it a little bit, and you get the caps in there. And uh, this does work with my Remington. I did take a Dremel, and I opened up uh, the areas around the nipples. I probably will open it up even a little bit more next time I shoot this thing, uh, and I need to clean it. I'll probably take out the, the nipples, clean it, and probably open them up a little bit more, uh, rebrown it, and then uh, it'll, even be, it'll be even easier. But it it is possible for me to use this capper with this Remington, so that's the cool thing. Another thing I did to this revolver while I'm mentioning it, is uh you can't really see it that well right now but i did open up the uh the plunger here uh i recessed it in a little bit more so it could it could load conicals and uh i have loaded conicals in fact that's what's in here uh if, if the lubricant wasn't over the chambers yeah, actually you still wouldn't be able to sell that they were they were uh conicals but what all i did all i did was just i it was very tenuous uh, a very tedious process i just kind of Seated the bullet in there a little bit with my fingers off the gun, took a mallet and kind of hammered it in a little bit, and then I had to put it in the gun and then press it down the rest of the way with the uh, with the ram with the uh, ramrod, and uh, that was a very slow process. But I have three 
of these uh, cylinders loaded up like that. So I'll probably go through the rest of the bullets I have that are conicals like that. Just load them up for you, a cylinder like that. And of course I have this, uh, this uh, blanket uh, case and it's got canvas on the inside. I really like it. Over here I have this. And I guess this is sort of meant more as a flintlock uh, accessories thing, but I have some of these uh, Casey Birchwood Barricade, and these are just like rags that are, or cloths that are soaked in some uh, lubricant. And then I kind of have spare screws. I have a spare screw set in here, and I have spare nipples, a spare set of nipples in here. I just close that up. I just have that. And of course I have some spare cartridges. Paper cartridges, combustible paper cartridges. And that's that's my black powder kit right there. The only thing really that I'm missing from this is a set of screwdrivers, period correct screwdrivers. They're very short and small, and there's like maybe like a set of five of them. Of course, I could use this uh, this modern, in fact, I do use this modern set um, when I take apart the gun, but it'd be nice to have, of course, some authentic period correct uh, screwdrivers, which I'm looking to get, but they're kind of expensive just for screwdrivers, and it's like, ugh, I don't really want to spend that, so I'll keep putting it off. But uh, I'm really excited about this uh, Lee bullet mold. I think it's very nifty, and I'm looking forward to trying it out sometime. So yeah, and I put all this, most of this, uh, obviously not the bowl, and I haven't actually uh, put put this together with, these mold, with this mold yet. But all this generally fits inside this Possible's bag. Um, it's a leather uh, Possible's bag, and it's uh, it's kind of like a re resembling a uh, fur trapper's bag, hanging off the side of it, attached to these. These are made for hanging small game, but I have uh, a few accessories here. This is, a, of course, a powder measure, 30 grains, and the cording on that is very thin because the uh, the opening there is very thin. Really really very thin. I have this here, which is a uh, nipple pick. Very helpful for getting in there and cleaning out the nipple. And I have another uh, capper. And uh, unfortunately, I did not get all of them perfectly. Uh, I honestly prefer my snail capper much more to this, but I thought I would just hang it from the bag just because I like the way it looks. And that's my black powder kit, guys.